Kid, seriously. Welcome to another festive episode of the Kid Seriously Show. We're the only podcast around that's really, 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 really wanting to make you say. Uh, every now and again, we get together to discuss the world, play our famous trivia question game show, discuss other things from Nerdland that might tickle our fancy, and once in a while, I'll review a trailer for a movie. Maybe two. To my left, it's everyone's favorite right-footed defenseman. It's Luke Neitzel. Mark will again be missing this evening. You no, know, he's not on some escapade that his wife paid for. He's really sick. So, Mark, we hope you feel better. Me, I'm Maya Madrid. And I remind you that you pick those players in that draft to win the games that we feel good about forfeiting at the end of the season in yet an- another uncompetitive cycle. Nick Saban, where are you? The green and gold needs you. And so it goes. Luke, how are you? I, I'm good. Did you do a Master P reference at the beginning of this? No, that was Spice Girls. Oh, that wasn't make him say, uh, na 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 No, no. Oh, well, yeah. I, I wish it had been. I am good. I got really, really drunk last night, and I'm not nearly as hungover as I should be, and I'm not sure how to feel about that, but it's working for me. Did you, did you drink water? You're very big into drinking water. You're very good about that. Yeah, I'm doing okay. I actually got up and worked out kind of too. Not like officially at a gym worked out, but I took my kids tubing, snow tubing, and we had to go up and down the hill for two hours. So I ended up getting like 6,000 steps in those two hours. So I don't know if that played a part, but I really can't believe I feel this good. Now, did you feel okay when you got into that? Did you just motor through it? You know, did you feel bad and then and then just, you know, just like a tank just went over the, the hangover and just destroyed it? Like, or did you feel pretty good when you woke up and then you were fine? I didn't feel good when I woke up, but I felt better than I should. Because I really earned it last night. Jim, you know, the man who makes me smile, came over and we did bourbon testing because I got uh, a bunch of bottles of bourbon for for Christmas, including a bottle of Blanton's, which is a very fancy bourbon. So we, we had some of that and then we had some of some other ones and we probably should have stopped after tasting two, but we tasted five. And... Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So how about you? When you say when you say testing. Do you mean, like, just a sip, or do you mean, like, just the tip? You know what I'm saying? Just the tip. See how it feels. No, you know, we did the uh, the glasses. You know, we did a glass of each, or whatever. I suppose maybe this is a sign. Maybe my hangover isn't as much physical as it's just hanging in my brain, because tasting was probably the better word to use than testing. Okay. I like it. Well, for me, the NFL season has finally come to a merciful and glorious end. My Packers are god-awful. My second favorite team, the Raiders, are even worse. I've been watching a lot of college football where all of my teams underachieved, but the lone one to actually go to a bowl game won it handily, so on Wisconsin. And I've been eating a lot. For the holidays, my dad is in town. We decided on a lark to go and get prime rib, and it was glorious. I put on all the weight, I'm pretty sure, that I lost this year in this past week. And so tomorrow I've got to make some resolutions, but it has been a fun week. Nice. Yeah. So did USC not make a bowl? No. No. I didn't realize they had that bad a year. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah. And New Mexico's was even worse. Of course, New Mexico doesn't have the expectations. Sure. It's it's not fun when week to week to week you're just like losing and all. You, you, you like a lot of teams, so you watch a lot of games, and you just lose and lose and lose and lose. It's. I'm, I'm glad it's over, to be honest with you. Nice, nice. Start Start fresh in the new year. Exactly. Well, we're going to get right to Mark Murphy, the Mark Murphy who played for the Packers and not the Mark Murphy who runs the Packers. It's his favorite game show. It's Am I Right or Am I Wrong? And in true American style, our contestant will offer up earnest opinions, which will either be taken as fact or immediately mocked by our moderator. Here's how the one player version of our game works. There's seven questions and Luke is going to administer tonight again because I have family in town, and he offered to write them, which was very kind. He will ask the questions. I will answer the question. If I get four right, I am the winner. If I don't, I am a loser. It's all on the line once again for me tonight. All right. Are you ready to jump into this? I hope so. You you basically introed us 
very, very well, because question one is, of course, diving into the NFL, the season that just mercifully came to an end for both of our teams. My team lost at home in unspectacular fashion to knock themselves out of the playoffs. Your team got shut out by the Lions at home to end a throwaway season, and both teams could be looking for coaches. We don't really know what the situation is with Mike Zimmer and the Vikings right now, but we do know that Mike McCarthy is already gone from Green yeah. Bay. I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say that Philbin didn't earn the spot over his interim tenure, and I'm going to put it to you. Lions? What was that? Getting goose egged by the Lions is it going to get him the job? Ge- generally not. No, uh, not not a great sign. Though you know they did beat the Patriots as well, so you know you you're, you have a lot in common with the Patriots this season. We'll we'll say that. Who tell us who? Man who knows all about football. Man who knows all about the Green Bay Packers. Tell us who is going to be the next head coach. Well, who I want to be. The not next not head who coach. you want. Who is going to be the next head coach? <laughs> You know, I have long lead-ins to these in long answers. Who I want to be the head coach is Bill Belichick, Nick Saban, or Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator for the Bears. But none of those three men are going to be the next head coach of the Green Bay Packers. Your next head coach, and it's because the Mark Murphy, who runs the Green Bay Packers, is good friends with him, and it was his first hire. It's going to be Pat Fitzgerald, head coach of Northwestern University. How, how old is Pat Fitzgerald? You know, I think he's he's probably almost 50. Would okay. I guess I could be wrong about that, but that's off the top of my head. All right. So, technically I'm going to I'm going to give you the point here because the answer written down is an old white man. And I'm going to count him as that because, you know, you you guys fired Ray Rhodes cuz you don't like black people and oh. uh, <laughs> And I don't like the Packers, so I'm going to take a shot. But you get the point because an old white man is definitely who their next coach is going to be. So, impressive start for you, one to nothing, Maya, Jim in the lead. I in the Jim Caldwell interview, are you saying he doesn't have a chance and that's just them fulfilling their obligation for the Rooney Rule? Is that what you're saying, Luke? Probably. Okay. Question two. For those of you that are big Black Mirror fans, we didn't get a full season like we wanted, but we got something pretty interesting, which was a full-length movie, even though some of their season episodes are full-length movies. But Bandersnatch came out, and what makes Bandersnatch different than most Black Mirror episodes is that it was a choose-your-own-adventure. You could actually, with your remote, pick options of what the characters would do. They might be simple decisions as what type of breakfast cereal they're going to have or more life and death type decisions that they have later in the show. Now, for me, I found this endlessly entertaining as I clicked multiple different options and started over to try and see all the different things that could happen. But of course, it wouldn't be Black Mirror if there wasn't some type of technology gone awry. So, Maya, a man known maybe slightly for being paranoid of things, can you please give us your biggest technological scare. What what scares you the most about modern technology? I'm pretty sure that the Russian Empire is keeping tabs on all of our search histories, and the plan for them to topple the United States is to release all that information publicly in a future situation. So that's what I'm going to go with. That's that's worrisome, but I don't think they they need to do that because they're they're better at letting us implode on ourselves without even having to bother to do that. I actually think Alexas are terrifying. I don't know why people would give Alexa access to everything. And as someone who uh, beta tested a product very similar to Alexa that I won't name, at one point, without being prompted, it suddenly started telling us that it was recording what we were saying. So, get your Alexa out of your house. And I don't know why you would trust Google or Facebook or any of these other people that continue to violate our trust with any of that. Um, Now let me go use my Google email and be a hypocrite on that. So, you bounce back on a tough one. You don't get the point. It's one and one. We're moving into question three. And we want to hit the topics that you yourself love the most. So, we're going to jump off the deep end and splash around in the water that is Aquaman the movie. Not just any movie. A movie that has already crossed $750 million at the box office and will be the first movie of the DCEU, as far as people are predicting, to cross the billion-dollar threshold, making it 
a smash smash success and guaranteeing us lots of Aquaman sequels to come. Now we know you're not going to see this movie no matter how much money it do- it does. But there has to have been a time in your life where you went and saw a movie or a show that you were not excited for, had no interest in and came away loving it. I want to hear what that is. It was honestly and you're going to roast me for this. I already know I'm not getting the point. But it was that Fantastic Four that was done by Fox in the mid-2000s. It was the sort of blossoming of the comic book movie franchise before Marvel really got into it. So the Jessica Alba, Michael Chiklis, Ian Griffith, and Chris Evans, Fantastic Four. Okay. I fully expect this to be the worst movie I've ever seen. At the time, I wasn't a big Fantastic... I mean, you're going to... I'm really going to lose the point for this. I was not a huge Fantastic Four guy before that movie. And then I went to see it, and I was like, well, that wasn't so bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I actually was like, maybe I should give the Fantastic Four a chance. I picked up Ultimate Fantastic Four and fell in love with the team after that so you could maybe make the argument that the only reason i love the fantastic four is because of that terrible movie is it a bad movie yeah but i wasn't excited to see it and i had a good time i i'm did i just black out am i drunk what just happened (laughs) okay well that was not the answer i had uh written down for me actually the answer is a movie I saw that that I think most people love, but when I saw the concept written on paper, I thought it sounded really, really stupid. Uh, And one of the things that I like to do is try to see as many movies that are nominated for Academy Awards as possible before the Academy Awards. So I went and saw a movie that was nominated only for Best Screenplay, and it the the synopsis of the movie was uh, a, a one woman gets pregnant in a world where people stopped having babies, and I thought that sounded absolutely ridiculous. But it was, of course, Children of Men, which is one of the best movies of the last 15 years. Uh, blown away by it, loved every single second of it. It's still probably in my, definitely in my top 10, maybe in my top 5 of all time. So you didn't hit that, and your answer is so ridiculous that I applaud the balls you had to to talk about that movie. So I'm going to give you the point. Why not? It's a, it's that. Wow. I I don't even. So what did you I, now? I'm, did you like Rise of the Silver Surfer? No, I never saw that in the theater, and I still don't know if I've seen that all the way through. It was literally I when I saw the first one, it was I had nothing to do on a Sunday. And I was like, I'm just going to go see this movie, even though it looks terrible. And so I really liked it. The first, I, I didn't really like it. I was like, wow, that wasn't that bad. And then the next time I was going to watch, or like the first time I was going to watch Rise of the Silver Surfer, I got Surfer, I got really drunk and then passed out. And then I've lost interest about 10 minutes in every time. Well, you so- obviously didn't make it to the bachelor party sequence when they go disco dancing with the wobbly arms. <laughs> I have seen that. Nice. It's all. And he can put luggage away from really far away in an airplane. So, Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. Best superhero ever. So you are you are sitting at at 2 to 1. Um not not bad at all. And and I'm going to move it to a topic you actually do like because the Bumblebee movie is yeah. doing it's doing okay. Uh it's staying pretty steady. It didn't have a huge drop off, but the big news for Bumblebee is that it is going to open next week in China which loves these type of movies and is probably going to, I'm going to say guarantee that we get a sequel to this one because I'm guessing it'll do well enough over there to make sure. And I think it is over 200 million internationally already. So it should be in decent shape for it to hit China and Japan and and pick up some steam. And you saw this movie and enjoyed it. And we all know that you love nostalgia. So I want to know of the original Transformers from the cartoon and we're going to throw out Optimus Prime and Bumblebee because that's too easy. Who is your favorite Transformer? Or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I misspoke. Who is your favorite Autobot? Oh, gosh. I don't really have one other than those two. All I cared about was Bumblebee. Wow, so in, 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 Maya taking the bold strategy of not even throwing a punch. Just... <laughs> 
Uh, the obvious answer is Blaster. Not only was he voiced by Scatman Carruthers, who's amazing, he also could shoot ch- tapes out of his chest, which I think we should know by now is all I really care about in a Transformer, is them shooting other Transformers in cassette tape form out of their chests. And also I had Blaster as a toy, so... I think it's very clear that the story of this competition so far is that when you win, you will do what is necessary and you will cut corners and make sacrifices to your morals for victory. Me, I refuse to do that. I have lost many a match either against myself in the questions or against other people because I refuse to do that. So... But while losing, I can still keep my head high knowing that I played the game the right way. Well, you know what? To quote the great Sean Connery, losers whine about their best. Winners fuck the prom queen. Moving on. It is two to two. We are going to switch even more into your realm. You also brought this up as well. We're going to talk a little college football. Ew. Because there was a team that got pretty much annihilated in the college football championship. That is Notre Dame, and the speculation now has been that Notre Dame had a lighter schedule that they set up themselves. There were some other teams that might have been more deserving. Did Notre Dame deserve to be in that game? And if the answer is no, who deserved to be there instead of them? Well, the easy answer is no, and then you just slide in Ohio State, but that's a bunch of crap because that team lost to, and almost like they lost in such horrific and terrible fashion that they did not deserve a spot. And plus like, screw you to urban Meyer. I don't need more urban Meyer in my life. So then the next team would have been Georgia and Georgia had two losses. And so if the question is, is a zero loss Notre Dame team less deserving than a two loss Georgia team? And I think that's ridiculous, so I don't go there. The only other answer is UCF, who has been undefeated for two entire years. So those are really the three candidates. And I'm going to do something shocking, because I don't ever, ever defend anything Notre Dame does, except they have a really cool professor who helped me out professionally one time. And so props to them and their school for that. This is strictly about the football team. I never give the football team props. I hate their football team. But here's what I'm going to say. In this era of the playoffs, you pay for what you get. And Notre Dame was the fourth most deserving team. And up until what happened a couple nights ago, they were the fourth best team. And it's not indicative of how bad Notre Dame truly is because they're a decent football team. It is indicative of how great Clemson is and, by extension, uh, Alabama. So here's what I'm going to say is, yes, they deserve to be there. And I'm super happy that they got absolutely annihilated. Well, you're going to get the point because I said, yes, they do deserve to be there. Our rationales were slightly different, being a guy who does not watch college football, other than when I'm watching people win the axe. I picked them because Kyle Rudolph went to Notre Dame and it probably made him happy. So good for you, Kyle Rudolph. Point, Maya. Way to battle back. It's the only time that Kyle Rudolph and Maya can win at the same time. Exactly. And that was what? That was question five? So are you actually sitting at three and two? So you're in a good spot right now. Uh, This next question is going to be a tough one, though, because it has a specific answer. Even though I'm going to tailor it like it's to, you know, anyone, it really just has one specific answer. So we are moving to TV. It is almost the new year. And what happens in the new year is we start to get replacement shows or mid-season shows that are coming back. So maybe the less successful shows that have shorter runs will come in and one of the things that's more popular this year is we've had a a couple different saved shows where one network has canceled it and then another network has picked it up for another run Uh, a good example being Brooklyn Nine-Nine which is an amazing show that everyone should watch a different example that is baffling to me is the Tim Allen starring Last Man Standing which basically was saved because conservatives like it because he hates hillary clinton i don't know i've never understood what the appeal of tim allen was is or was i i don't see anything funny about him barking like a gorilla and saying he has a power tool it makes no sense to me which leads me to think who is an actor or actress that you just cannot fathom the popularity of for any reason i never understood 
why people like Julia Roberts. I never got it. I never thought she was a particularly good actress. I never thought she had, like, the appeal that guys were going to be looking at her to get, um, you know, big box office. I, I, pretty Woman, I guess, people people really enjoy. But Julia Roberts, for me, I just never understood it. That That's not a half-bad answer, because I think she's overrated as an actress. I think most of the time she's playing the, the same role and she won an Academy Award for playing the same role but with swear words added in. So I, I don't I don't love her either. But the, the answer is Joel Kinnaman. That guy drives me fucking insane. And I don't I don't even know if I can put my finger on what it is, but I see something with him in it and I immediately just hate it. No matter no matter what it is. This question actually came up because friend of the show, Garth, asked me if I watched the show Altered Carbon because he wanted to get my my take on it. And I was like, I turned it off after two episodes because I hated it. But it had Joel Kinnaman in it, so you probably shouldn't ask me what my opinion is of it. I don't know what it is about that guy. He drives me up the wall. So Ever, ever since I first asked you about him, because I saw The Killing, and The Killing was one of my favorite things in fiction. Like, I just enjoyed it. I binged it so much. Your reaction to my question was so like personal and just like mean about him. You were like... Yeah, it was an all right show, but that wormy guy, I can't stand him. And there were like lots of expletives. And it was like, it was like you were mocking somebody in middle school. (laughs) And I can't even explain exactly what it is. Like just drives me insane. And that show would have been so much better if they just would have put someone else in that role. I loved him in that role. Hmm. You just don't like Swedes. Uh, Maybe, you know, maybe actually what we're putting our finger on here is, is that I just don't want to watch low rent Eric Sarsgaard. Like, you know. Just just cast Eric Sarsgaard and you'll be fine. Don't don't bother us. This, this Joel Kinnaman crap you keep pushing on us. That's that's not working. You're the the new you know Luke Evans, Sam Worthington, like Gerard Butler. Like we're really trying hard to make this guy work, even though no one cares. So unfortunately, you don't get the point, which weirdly means that it all comes down to the final question, as somehow it almost always does when I'm in charge. Weird. Crazy, crazy. One of the things that you noticed when we first started this podcast is I am wearing uh, a new outfit today. I am wearing something I'm very excited about, which is my throwback late 80s, early 90s North Stars green jersey that I got, which for me is the best logo in, in hockey and sports history. It's my favorite jersey of all time. I've wanted it since I was eight, and I'm very excited about it. What is your favorite throwback jersey? My favorite throwback jersey is not, in fact, very much different than a current jersey. But the throwback aspect would be the person on the jersey. And that person was the greatest athlete of our childhood, was also the greatest video game persona of our childhood, and it is a Los Angeles Raiders Bo Jackson jersey. That wasn't the question. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, we award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. I didn't ask you for the, the greatest player jersey you wanted. I asked you for a throwback jersey. That means a jersey that the team doesn't currently wear. It's under protest. That's r- ridiculous. You even, you even in your intro knew what you were doing because you were like, well, it's still the same jersey, but it's just a guy I really liked. That wasn't the question, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, what we had written down on, on paper was the purple Hartford Whalers jersey. It would be would be next after my North Stars one. Love that purple. Whalers had a great logo. So, this is unfortunate. We're it's having... The, if you're going to go hockey, it's the Vancouver V. I mean, ugh. Oh, no, because I actually legitimately like the Whaler jersey, where the Vancouver V is just one of those it's so terrible, it's bad type Whatever ones. Awesome. Oh, you, just, you didn't think about Bo Jackson. I also oh, never, I've also never played Tech Mobile. Boots and or cacao. Hey, what happened to my music? <laughs>